Ingrid would always remember the first time she saw this Italian production. Its impact would soon overturn her life. The film, Rome, Open City. Its star, Anna Magnani. It was directed by a brilliant newcomer to the international film world, Roberto Rossellini. Open City was the first picture he shot, and he had no script for it. He had ideas in his mind, very clear. He knew what he wanted. He didn't use professional actors except two or three. Most of the people were what he wanted to see in the picture, and which he chose from people, ordinary people in the street. That was his way of working, and that was his way of improvising, as they call it in the United States, but that was the way he made pictures. She spoke to me about Roberto Rossellini on a few occasions while we were shooting Joan of Arc, and uh, she felt that working uh, for him and with him would be an enormous step to get away from the uh, glamorization of characters that occurred in, in Hollywood in those days, and having seen Magnani and uh, Rome Open City and so on, she felt that this would give her a chance to uh, play a peasant, not a glamorized uh, queen of uh, celluloid. She was praised for her performance as a tormented woman in Under Capricorn with Joseph Cotton. Please be seated, gentlemen. I hope I'm not too late to take a glass of wine with you. My wife, gentlemen. Lady Henrietta Flusky. Sit down. But more than ever, Ingrid viewed her recent efforts as obvious products of a studio backlot. Well, of course, uh, Hollywood was extremely glamorous at that time, and there were very big productions going on, and perhaps she got a little bored. I mean, she was playing... She'd had a lot of lovely parts, but this man writing to her and saying, I want you to come and be in my film, was a great excitement to her. It was a new beginning, a new idea, and I think that's what made her feel that she would start again, which was very brave, very brave indeed, but then she was a very brave lady. Ingrid came here to Italy, to Rome. In 1949, I was 16 at that time, and uh, all Italy was in make a big feast when Ingrid arrived. She was overwhelmed from love, I think, because they were not only the family who really loved her. It was very easy to love Ingrid because she she was so natural. She was, she was so it's a fantastic human being. But easy to say, but she was like that. It's not an exaggeration. She was she had a communication which is. We didn't expect from a Swedish person, because uh, we know that they could have been very cool as a as character. And she was not. She, so really, love was in between us, was very easy. Ingrid was to star in a film called Stromboli. Production delays were only part of their problem. Rumors were spreading that Ingrid had fallen in love with Roberto Rossellini. Thousands. In true Rossellini style, there was no shooting script, and Mario Vitale, a local fisherman, was cast as Ingrid's husband. Terra. Como se dice terra in inglese? New terra. See? We plant again. Barley. Vine. I don't care about your barley, or your vine, or your new terror. I want to leave this island and go away, far away. Like all the others who lived here, and were born here, and went away, far away. What is it, Chase? Listen, this is my home. You're my wife. 
Mr. He, because I want to. Now reports of Ingrid's pregnancy overshadowed the film and made world headlines. Quick exploitation followed. Robertino Rossellini was born shortly before Ingrid was free to marry his father. Pia would grow up in the custody of Dr. Peter Lindstrom. On March the 14th, 1950, Senator Edwin Johnson delivered a blistering attack on Ingrid. He accused her of abandoning her husband and child and declared that Ingrid Bergman should never again be permitted to set foot on American soil. I believe that in America, they had little statues, little heads of her as Joan of Arc, which she'd played, in some of the churches. And the, what happened, I think, is that when this broke, they took them out of the churches. And I can see her now standing, looking out of my window on the road, and she was crying. She was really very upset about it altogether. And it's funny because nowadays, of course, all this who doesn't mean anything, but they saw her as a Madonna, as a, somebody representing motherhood and all these things that uh, as actresses we act, but you, she represented these things to the world and they felt let down, I suppose. There was a lot going on behind the scenes in those days in Hollywood. Uh, that the reigning uh, arbiters of moral values, Hedda Hopper and Luella Parsons, knew about, and uh, with their favorites, they kept their mouths shut. Uh, when Ingrid, in her tremendous honesty, uh, fell in love with Rossellini and declared she could no longer live with her husband because she was in love with another man, she was pilloried. Uh, the, uh, the Virgin Mary of films had betrayed uh, the image that they had built up about her, and she was uh, crucified for being truthful and honest as she always was. Although she was rejected by the United States, Ingrid set about building her new life. There was work, and there was family. I lived with Ingrid since she arrived in Rome. And so I follow her when Robertino was born. Then the twins, Ingrid and Isabella. And I know that she was very unhappy because Pia was not with her. And I was warning her because the grown up people, they don't know how much children can suffer about things. I visited Ingrid in Rome. And one day when I was with her, she received a letter from Pia. And I, I have never seen such happiness. She laughed and cried, and she was so happy. And when he, she, it was the first letter she had received, and I could understand that. I'm sorry if I woke you up. I, I only wanted to know how the children are. Ingrid would make six films with Rossellini, all box office failures. In fear, she portrays a woman engaged in an illicit affair. Blackmailed, she resolves to commit suicide. Listen, tomorrow morning, when the children wake up, you must take them in your arms. You must tell them. You must tell them how much, how much I love them. So very, very much. No, no, Martha, nothing. Nothing is wrong. It's only very late. I don't know when I can come and see you. Martha, can you hear me? Stay with them, always. As you, you always stayed with me. Goodbye. 